Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this quick little intro. Today I'm sharing my first part of my 2022 eyeshadow palette collection video. These did so well on my channel last year and everyone seemed to like them. So I think I want to make it an annual thing and I'm going to share my palette collection again. So in this first part, you're going to see more of like my indie brands and higher end brands. And then in the second part, you're going to see more of my affordable and maybe bigger palettes like Morphe and stuff. But I just wanted to pop in here and say hi. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get into the video. So for my eyeshadows, this top drawer houses some of my higher end stuff. We have Indie Brands, Sigma, Nomad, Melt, Odin's Eye. And then the other drawer we're gonna look at is this one, which houses things like MAC, Urban Decay, Tarte, ABH, trying to think of what else, Too Faced. So these are the two drawers we're gonna look at today. I've gone ahead and pulled out all of the palettes from the first drawer, and then I also pulled out the palettes that belong in this drawer that are in my everyday drawer, um, like for my Shop My Stash or my Panless Eyeshadows projects. So let's go ahead and dive in. I think we should start right here with Lethal. So Lethal Cosmetics, I think is a German indie brand. I really like them a lot. This is their One Up palette. I actually just got this in the mail recently. This is their newest launch, so it is arcade themed. I haven't gotten a chance to play around with it yet, but I'm very excited about this one. I also have the Lethal is Dead in collaboration with Teresa is Dead. I really enjoy this one. This was my first Lethal palette. We have the Berlin 89. I actually reviewed this one on my channel last year. This duochrome shade is amazing. This, I believe, is the Velvet Dusk palette. I can't remember which one this is named, but this has just some of those grungier neutral tones, some pops of color. It's a really good fall palette. And I also have the Lethal After Dark palette. This one is bright neons, some pastels, and some beautiful shimmers. I also have two palettes from Odin's Eye. So the first one is the Gila palette, which is in collaboration with Angelica Nikovist. And this is a very pretty almost like grungy neutral color story with some pinks. I haven't tried this one out yet, but I do really like Angelica and I wanted to get it to support her. And then I also have the Solmon 2 palette, which is their newest palette. And this one is gorgeous. I'm obsessed with this palette. It has been so fun to play with this summer. Let's go ahead and tackle this little pile. I have one Dominique Cosmetics palette. This is the Celestial Storm palette. I got this from my husband as a gift a few years ago and I really enjoy it. I think it's very fun. I also have three palettes from Sigma Beauty. So the first one we have is the Enchanted palette. Very pretty, very mauve shimmery, ethereal type color story. We have the Sigma and Cinderella collab. This was my first Sigma palette, and I reviewed this one on my channel last summer as well. I really enjoyed this palette. I still find myself reaching into it, especially for this shade Fantasy and Bippity Boppity Boo. I find they're very, very nice to wear with other neutrals. And overall, the quality of Sigma palettes are very, very good. And of course, I have the new mod, which is, I believe, their newest palette. And you know, I'm a sucker for berries and mauve tones, so I had to pick this one up as well. Let's go ahead and talk about some of my melt palettes. So the first one we have in no particular order is the Gemini. This is the first of the two Gemini palettes. I did purchase this when it re-released this summer, or this past spring, I should say. And I do really like the color story of this. It's very grungy, and I find myself very inspired by this palette. We have the Rust palette, which is one of my favorite neutral palettes of all time. I find it so beautiful. These colors are just so, so easy to work with, and they look so good no matter what you do. Before I forget, I have the Blueprint palette, which is in my current project level up. And I've been using this one a lot recently. I hadn't used it prior to the project, but as you can see, a lot of these shades are starting to look very well loved. Millennial Pinks. I got this one um, during the Sephora VIB sale and I feel like I swatched it, but I don't think I've used it on the eyes yet. It was half off. I think they're discontinuing it or it has been discontinued. Either that or they're reformulating, I'm not quite sure, but I did pick this one up because I do generally like the Melt formula and I love anything pink. 
the Muerte palette. This was my first melt palette. I very much love this color story. I'm very sad it was limited edition. I really wish that they would bring this back. I feel very hesitant to use this palette a lot of the time because it is limited edition and it is so pretty, but that is a very bad excuse as to why I don't use it so often. And at the same time as I purchased the Muerte, I purchased the Vita palette, which is the kind of conjoining piece to the two palettes. I really like this one. This one I do find myself reaching into quite often, especially for shades like these um, yellow greens and Soul, this really pretty tangerine. And you can't forget how cute these look together. I also have the Melt and Beetlejuice collection. So we have the Waiting Room palette. This one is more of those reds and grungy grays and blacks. I feel like you can do a very deep smoky eye with this or a really pretty red look. I find that whenever I wear the reds in this palette, I always get complimented on my makeup. I also have the recently deceased palette from Melt and Beetlejuice. This one has more of those standard Beetlejuice purples and greens, the things that you think of when you think of Beetlejuice. It's a really pretty palette and I did review this one on my channel a few years back when it came out. Overall, I really like these palettes. I think they're very fun and I love to play with them around Halloween. I also have the Gemini 2 palette. I will link the video review of this one down below. Any videos corresponding to palettes I will link in the description box below, but I really enjoy this one. This one's actually my untouched one. If you watched my review, you know I have two, one that's broken and one that is this one, completely untouched, and I keep the untouched one for kind of like display. Very pretty though. I very much enjoyed the Gemini 2 palette. And then I also have the Amor y Mariposas palette, which was the holiday palette for I believe this past year. This one is a lot of fun. I really like these greens up at the top, those teals and turquoises and the purples, the orange. I feel like there's a lot of fun things you can do with this palette and overall, it's a pretty good palette. I have two from Kaleidos. The first one is the Club Nebula palette, which is in collaboration with Angelica. If you didn't know, I am a huge Angelica fan, hence why I have two of her palettes. I think this is one of the most unique color stories on the market. It's not available anymore, but I feel like this is one of the most unique color stories I've ever seen from a brand, and I'm very, very impressed with the quality of this as well. And also from Kaleidos, I have the Escape Pod palette. I have the original Escape Pod. I think they've repackaged it, so it looks a little bit different, but I have the original one. This one's a lot of fun. I like the lavenders, and I feel like these shimmers are just so nice to layer with other shades. Let's go ahead and get these Pat McGrath palettes out of the way, shall we? I have quite a few. Um, I have, this first one is the Bronze Seduction palette. I left them in their boxes so you could see the pretty artwork, but also so I could tell the names. But this is the Bronze Seduction. I really like this one. I love the astral shades. The astral shades from Pat are like literally my favorite eyeshadows ever. This one, I feel like I don't reach for all that often out of all of my pat palettes, but I do really like the color story. It's very wearable and easy to create everyday looks with. This one is the Divine Rose 2 palette. This is one I reach for a little bit more frequently. I've definitely played with these mattes. As you can see, I've used all of the shimmers several times, and I really like this. I really like the duochrome shade in here. This actually got me hooked on duochrome shades, and the pinks are very fun. Pink is my favorite color and one of my favorite favorite colors of eyeshadow to wear on myself. And the packaging of these are just sheer art in themselves. I can never get rid of the packaging for these. This is the Hutopian Dream. This is probably my favorite out of all of the Pat palettes that I own. I am obsessed with this purple shade and this shade up here. I think they are so pretty. The mattes blend so easily. The color story is so fun. You can do something more neutral or like everyday type wear or really pop it out with some of these astral shades. The astral shades really get me. I'm obsessed with them. And the last Pat palette for these big ones I have is the Subversive. This is a very great grungy color story. I feel like, I don't even think I've used this one yet. I bought this when they had a sale. They're always doing sales over on the Pat McGrath website and I got this on sale. I really like the color story. I just haven't played with it yet. So I'm planning on pulling this one out, especially in the fall and winter this year but this is the subversive. I also have the two Bridgerton palettes. So this is the Diamond of the First Water. 
Diamond of the First Water. This is so pretty. I used this nonstop when this came out and I purchased it. Again, this astral shade gets me every time and these really pretty like baked, I don't know if they're like a baked or like a gelée formula, but I really like these two shades at the bees. And this one is the Belle of the Ball palette, which is Penelope inspired. I believe this one is inspired by Daphne and this one is inspired by Penelope. And I really like this one as well. We have some Nomad palettes. Nomad is quickly becoming one of my favorite brands. So Nomad, if you're watching, I would love to figure out how to get on your PR because I'm obsessed with your stuff. But this is the America's Parks palette. This one is very colorful. I find myself reaching into this for specific shades, especially like this middle row of shimmers. I really like mixing delicate arch with the narrows. I feel like these two create a really pretty glittery, situation that you can put on with a neutral look and then these marble chains are so pretty as well and these mattes i love to do like a yellow to green to blue transition kind of like going in this little direction i feel like there's a lot you can do with this palette and it's very unique nomad always has some of the most unique color stories in my opinion this is their newest palette that just came out it is the fete de provence palette and this is my favorite Nomad palette, hands down. I've only used this one a couple times. This was actually what I was wearing in the intro to this video. So that yellowy pink look, I used this row right here, the yellows, and then I mixed these two for my lower lash line. And I really, really like this. I can't wait to play with this one some more. This is the Whistler Snow Lodge. I like the color story of this one as well. I love the blues and greens. To be honest, it makes me think of Christmas. You have like the greens and reds and then like the blues, which make me think of snow. And I feel like this is just the perfect winter palette. The Paradise palette. This is, I believe like a Polynesian inspired palette. I really like this one. This shade came crumbled. So I tried to pack it back down, but I really like this palette as well. The colors are so bright and vibrant and fun. And like I said, Nomad always just creates the best color stories in the world. I think they are so well done. And you can't forget the Haunted Europe palette. I'm trying to see, there you go. You can kind of see the shiftiness of the cover on this one. This one is probably my most used Nomad palette. I love to reach into this one for Highgate Cemetery. It makes the most beautiful inner corner these mattes over here create such a nice grungy mauve look and overall it's just such a fun color story and it's halloween themed so of course i'm gonna love it i have some more luxury slash high-end palettes so first up we have the marc jacobs terrific this is probably the least favorite palette in my entire collection i did review this and i thought it was absolutely terrible but i don't think marc jacobs is a brand anymore so you know, it is what it is. I do plan on pulling this out in my A to Z project pan or possibly like my pan those eyeshadows to use it up a little bit more because it was pretty pricey. But as a whole, I was not impressed by this and I'm kind of glad it's my only Marc Jacobs palette. The packaging is really cute though. I love the cherry emblem. I have this one from Charlotte Tilbury. It is the Walk of No Shame quad. This one I purchased on a trip back home to California and I, I do like it. It's not my favorite palette in the world, but it's very easy for like a, a one and done or like a throw everything on and go. And they make it super easy for you by even telling you kind of how to use the shades. So I have the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 2 palette. This one is so insanely reflective. This one's very pretty. I do like the shimmers. I find that they pull a little bit different on the skin than in the pan. And I've tried pretty much every shade, but these cream ones on the end, I just haven't figured out how to work in these cream ones into a look not that the colors are hard to work into but i'm trying to figure out like how to actually apply them and make them blend and look good with the other shadows but overall it's a pretty nice palette i don't know if i would consider buying another one because this was pretty pricey i think it was like 60 dollars but I do like it, the quality is pretty good. And I have a stack of Natasha Denona. I'm actually missing my cranberry palette and I'm not exactly sure where it is. So we're just gonna pretend that I have my little mini cranberry palette because I don't wanna dig for it. But this is the retro palette. This is my favorite out of pretty much all of the Natasha palettes. It is also my most loved, if you could not tell. I really enjoyed this one. I reviewed this one right when it came out and I also wore this one pretty much nonstop after it came out. I love this little six pans over here. These shimmers, glitz, and psychedelic are just the most beautiful toppers. I really like this palette. It's very well done. I have the Love palette. Again, very well loved. As you can see, Giving has seen better days and I have a nice pan in Transparent. This one has been 
pretty much in and out of my pan those eyeshadows for the past couple updates and it's gotten a lot of love i have the pastel palette i really wanted to like this one more than i did and it's not that i don't like the quality because i really like natasha's formula i just feel like this the color story is gorgeous the concept is amazing i love the idea of it i'm so inspired by like all these different shades and when i look at this i see a million different looks i want to do but i just feel like they don't last on my eye like some of the other natasha palettes and it's kind of disappointing so i feel like i don't normally gravitate towards this one i also have the bronze palette by natasha and this one is very pretty as well i bought this i think as my birthday gift the first year we lived in utah i'm constantly buying myself makeup for like different occasions uh this is the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome Palette. This one I actually purchased during the pandemic when we were still living in California and I really like this palette. I know a lot of people weren't huge fans of it but I find that this color story is just so unique and so inspiring. It's kind of up there along with the Club Nebula Palette by Kaleidos or Kaleidos. I don't know how you pronounce it technically but I really like this one as well and this one's always giving me fresh inspiration. And last but not least for Miss Natasha we have the Tropic Palette. And this one, there's not much to say about it. I bought this when it was on clearance when they started phasing this one out when it was discontinued. Um, I do really like Vintage Taupe. That's probably my favorite shade in this whole palette. But other than that, I don't find myself reaching for it too often. And last but not least in this drawer, we have some Lunar Beauty. So this is the Strawberry Dream palette. I really like Blue Diamond up here, and of course these pinks are gorgeous. I have the Volume 2 Moonspell palette. I'm obsessed with the Moonspell palettes. This is so pretty. I reviewed this one around Halloween last year as well. And then I have the original Moonspell. I'm going to try and be careful because I have to actually repress one of these shades. I accidentally crushed this shade uh, Prue, and I just haven't gotten around to repressing it yet so it's been sitting in my drawer very very carefully uh, but this is the original Moonspell palette this was also a gift from my husband I believe the first year we were married he got it for me for Christmas or my birthday or something but I really like this one as well magic transition into the second drawer I did find my cranberry palette by Natasha so this is what it looks like very very simple and while I was at it I also found this uh, mothership subliminal platinum bronze palette by Miss Pat McGrath I forgot about this palette actually um, but this is what she looks like this was actually a gift from one of my coworkers when I was working at a salon in the Marina Del Rey area so I have this little guy from Smashbox this is the Smashbox in Vlada petal metal palette I believe it was already an existing palette and they just kind of smacked uh, Vlada's name on there but this is what she looks like it's just some rose gold shimmers I have so many palettes all over the place and I'm like trying to figure out where to start I think let's go ahead and dive into some Too Faced so this is my Too Faced cinnamon swirl palette this is what she looks like pretty well loved I've really dug into stay current as you can see um, but some of the other shades have not gotten as much love yet I have the white chocolate bar palette this was a holiday palette a few years ago I want to say in like 2018 not the best quality but I really like the color story on this one the semi-sweet chocolate bar this was one of my first eyeshadow palettes ever she is very loved and if you've seen the pictures of the new better than chocolate palette that Too Faced came out with I feel like it's giving me some my sweet vibes honestly with the blue and some of these like warmer neutrals this just screams like 2016 to me but I love it anyway I also have the sweet peach palette I mean who doesn't have the sweet peach palette it still smells amazing even though it is on the older side in my collection but I really liked this one when it came out I have this little guy this is the Christmas coffee palette it is so dang cute it's just this like little eight pan palette I purchased this at the end of holiday season last year when it was on sale and it's just like look at the gingerbread man obsessed I have the gingerbread spice palette this is one of the most loved palettes in my collection powdered sugar is nearly gone I'm actually making it my life goal to finish that shade I'm very close to ding pan on warm and toasty as well and some of these other shades are starting to get some pretty decent dips in them so this is definitely one of my my staple palettes if you could not tell I have the gingerbread extra spicy this one is the sister palette to the gingerbread spice I purchased it because I enjoyed the other one so much and honestly this one just did not do it for me I'm not a huge fan of this palette I like the matte selection but I really prefer the color story overall um, in the other gingerbread palette and last but not least I have this natural lust palette this one is insanely huge 
I don't really know what to do with it, honestly. I don't know why I got this because I really don't like huge palettes like this in general. I just feel like they're so overwhelming, but I got it anyway, so I'm not the smartest at making decisions. I have two palettes from the Kylie Cosmetics brand left. I've decluttered pretty much all my other palettes. That's not true. I feel like I have another one somewhere. I have the Nice palette somewhere. I just don't know where it is, but this is the Chill Baby palette, and then I also have the Valentine's Day palette from, I want to say 2019 was when this came out. 2018 or 2019, I can't remember. Let's go ahead and pull out my MAC palettes. So this first one is the Now and Zen 9 Pan palette. This one came out, I want to say in 2019. It's not super special. In fact, the quality is probably subpar, but you know, if I see a basic B palette, I have to get it because I have no self-control. I also have this one from the Patrick Star, the original Patrick Star collection. This is Goal Getter. It's just a really pretty, four pan palette, just a little quad. I have this one from the Patrick Star Summer Collection. This is in the shade Heat Stroke, another little quad. I wish there was a way to depot these because I feel like I would just like to have them all in a singles palette. Uh, and then this one is Sugar Mama, which I believe is the winter collection after the original collection. I like the olive in this one, but it just doesn't look olive on the eye, so it's kind of disappointing. I also have this little nine pan palette by the Aladdin and MAC collab. This is in the shade Princess Jasmine. One of my favorite MAC palettes. I really like the color story of this one, and it was an everyday palette for me for quite some time. And then I also have the two Stranger Things palettes. So this one is in the shade The Void. It's the real world and the upside down if you hold the packaging together. That's why I kept both of them. But this is the Void eyeshadow palette. This one is giving me major Vecna vibes. I don't want to give any spoilers, so I won't say anything, but this is more of the cooler wearable palette. And then we have Hawkins High, which looks like this little notebook and it has more of the brighter colors. This one gives me more of like the kids that go to Hawkins. Like, it gives me max vibes, honestly. Let's go ahead and talk about my insane ADH collection for a sec. So I wanna start with my Modern Renaissance because this was my first eyeshadow palette ever. I have definitely gotten a lot more use out of it since you saw my collection last year. It's definitely looking more loved, but this is the Modern Renaissance. She's very crusty and old now. I also have the Alyssa Edwards. This one doesn't have too much love on it yet. We have the Riviera palette. One little pan in there, but other than that, it's not super loved. I do wanna dip into sales soon though and use that as my setting shade. I have Subculture. This is the original Subculture. I actually purchased this at Disneyland because when it launched, I was at Disney and I don't know how to have nails apparently because I've dug so many holes into this palette. I also have the Carly Bible palette. This one I really didn't want, but the collectionist in me like needed it. So here is my very hardly used, still has the sticker on the mirror, Carly Bible. My Soft Glam, one of my all-time favorite palettes in the entire world. I actually took this with us on our California trip recently and I've gotten lots of love out of it. I'm hoping to maybe use this as like a pan that palette next year. I just haven't decided. Hate to see it go, but it's definitely starting to get old. And then I also have the Norvina. I really like the Norvina. Fond memories of this one as well. Am I the only person that just like remembers times in my life by like the palettes that they bought around that time? This is the Prism. I remember wearing this one to beauty school a lot when I started beauty school. I also have Sultry, one of my favorite palettes of all time. All of the progress in this and the pans were completely organic. They weren't in any panning projects. I just like this palette that much, apparently. I also have the Jackie Ina. This is such a staple in my collection. I'm so sad this wasn't a permanent piece in the ABH line. I am scared to use it because it was limited edition and I enjoy it so much, but again, not a good reason to not use something. And then I also have the Amrezy. This one I have recently pulled out quite a few times and I've actually thoroughly enjoyed it. And then I also have the Nouveau palette. I really, really like this one. This has definitely been one of my favorite palettes this year so far. This lavender, chef's kiss. I have two little guys from Rem Beauty. So this first one is the palette Go Go Boots. These are not my favorite quality palettes, but I did really like this one, which is called Baby Doll. Go Go Boots was kind of a disappointment, but Baby Doll I've used several times and I actually really like this one. The quality is much better in this one than in Go Go Boots. I have three Tarte palettes left. I've pretty much decluttered all of my other Tarte palettes. So first up we have the Man Eater. 
just a very basic B neutral palette. You know, I love it though. I also have Tarte Linen Bloom, one of my very first eyeshadow palettes ever, and I will forever love this palette. And I also have the Aspen Ovard and Tarte palette. I really like this one as well. Tarte palettes just smell like vanilla and I'm kind of obsessed with it. I have two from Dose of Colors. This one is Snow Angels. It's this little five pan, what is that, like a quint? This was a holiday palette from a few years back. And then I also have the Dose of Colors and I Love Sarah E palette. Still don't know how to say that name, but uh, this is what this one looks like. Before I jump into my massive Urban Decay array back there, I have four from Huda. This is the Pastels Mint palette. Very pretty. I really like these shimmery swirl shades. I'm glad that they're kind of coming back into style. I've noticed ColourPop doing quite a few of those recently. I also have the Color Block. This is the blue and green Color Block palette. I have not used this one yet, but I got it because I really wanted to try the cake liner, you know, priorities. And then I also have the Wild Jaguar palette. I really like this one. This one's one of my favorite cool tone palettes. And I have the Wild Python palette as well. And move my insane amount of Urban Decay palettes forward. Oh, I do have this one from Luminous. This is the Sir John and Luminous Lion King palette. Does anyone know if Luminous is still a brand? I feel like I haven't heard anything about them since this palette came out. So first up we have the Naked Heat. I really like the Naked palettes. They're so fun and so easy to use. This one has been pretty well loved. I'm a sucker for a good warm neutral moment. And then I also have the Naked Ultraviolet. This one was a little bit disappointing. I feel like with a palette, especially if it's called the ultraviolet palette, the purples, especially like the violet should be very, very pigmented and prominent, but this is definitely a more wearable approach to violet. I have the Wild West Naked palette. This one is my husband's favorite, so shout out to him. I have the Naked 3 palette. This is what she looks like, just very basic, everyday wearable palette. This is the Naked Smoky My Mirror is actually broken off devastatingly. I don't think there's a way to fix that, but here is what the color story looks like. It is one of the older palettes in my collection. They definitely don't make the Naked Smoky anymore. I have the Naked Honey palette, which is very pretty gold warm neutrals. Like I said, a sucker for warm neutrals. I have the Naked Cyber. This one was a little bit more disappointing. I had high expectations for this, especially with how popular duochrome type shades are on the market recently, um, but this just did not do it for me. It is very washed out and very basic, but I really like the outer packaging. Like if they could have made the inside look like the outside, would have been phenomenal. And then I have the Naked Cherry. I think my most loved Urban Decay palette. This one is very, very lovely. I took this one on our trip as well, and I used it pretty much every day. And then the last three palettes in this drawer, we have the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. Not the most exciting, but I do really like Super Greens and Kale in this palette. I think they're really nice. I also am not a fan of like packaging that opens like this. I just find it so inconvenient. Um, I have the Beached palette by Urban Decay. This came out forever ago. Still think this was a fever dream because I've yet to see other people with it. And last but not least, I have the Urban Decay and Prince palette. I can't remember which one it is. It doesn't say on the back, um, but there's two different palettes and this is the Golder Smoky Eye one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this collection. Let me know what your favorite palette in my collection so far has been and which palettes you have. I'd love to see everybody else's collection. So let me know. I hope you guys have a lovely day wherever you are and I'll see you all later. Bye friends.